Okay, so then I said there were more, right? So I've done the sum and difference for sine. How am I going to do the sum and difference for cos? Now, again, you can prove this in all kinds of different ways, but if I can, I want to use what I already know to get me to this. So what's the relationship between sine and cosine again? Like, what does the name tell you? Okay. Complement. It, it's the complement, right? So therefore, cos of something should be equal to sine of 90 degrees minus whatever that something was. Does that make sense? So uh, sine 30, cos 60. Sine 21, cos 60. Now, whatever adds up to 90. So I'm going to write that over here. 90 degrees minus this angle over here. Like so. Hmm. Okay, now that's, that's a compound angle. It's a compound angle. So I'm going to write it, and there's a bunch of different ways, again, that I could do this, but I think the simplest way, I'm just going to expand this out. So if I get rid of the brackets, I'm going to have minus alpha minus beta. Okay, now watch. Like I said, there's lots of different ways to do this, but the simplest way to use the knowledge I already know on this is to say, well, I don't know what to do with three angles. I only know what to do with two. So I'm just going to lump a couple of them together as one angle. How about this pair? I'm going to call 90 minus alpha. I'm going to call that one angle. Watch what happens. Have a look. Have a look at that line I've just written. Which one of these do I need to use? This one, don't I? Because look, it's a difference. There's a minus in between, so here's where I'm at. So I'm going to write this, but instead of these alphas here, what am I going to write? 90, 90 minus alpha. Uh, and the beta is fine, right? It's a minus beta along the end. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to write sine of 90 degrees <laughs> minus alpha. I'm using this one, right? Cos beta. What's the sign in the middle again? It's minus. Okay, what's the next thing I write? Cos 90 minus alpha. Very good. Cos of 90 minus alpha. And? Sine beta. Sine beta. Mm -hmm. All I've done is just a straight swap into that using these two. Okay, I'm almost there. Hold on a second. <laughs> From here to here, I changed cosines into sines by using this other identity I know. One of the complementary identities, right? Because they add up to 90. But look, now I have more of these guys flying around. What is sine of 90 minus alpha? By definition, it's cos alpha, right? It's the complement, see? So that's cos beta. Uh, the sine in the middle is a minus. What about this guy? That's sine alpha. And hey presto, there's your identity for cos of alpha plus beta, right? Slightly weird because you're like, oh, all right. You can start to see I'm getting a lot of these and they do look quite similar to each other, don't they? Which is why we give you the reference sheet um, so that you should start to get to remember them. But if you're unsure, like, wait, is it plus or minus? Is this the one where sine and cos are together? Or is this the one where cos and cos are together? Okay, if you're ever in doubt, you've got that there as kind of a safety blanket. Okay, but the more you use this, the more comfortable you'll get. If I've done cos of alpha plus beta, what's the natural next step? Yeah, I'll do the difference. This will be quicker now that I've already established all of this minus stuff, right? So I'm going to substitute into here, but instead of betas, I'm going to have negative betas, right? So I'm going to have cos alpha cos of negative beta minus sine alpha sine of negative beta. We already know what happens to cos of negative beta, right? Remember what happens? Yeah, it's the same as cos beta, right? It doesn't change. So I've just got cos alpha cos beta still hanging out the front there. What happens to the guy in the end? Because minus Okay, so this sine of negative beta, right? I can rewrite as negative sine beta. There's two negatives here, one here and one here, right? So therefore this is plus. Okay, one, two, three, four, four identities. Sine, cos, what's the last piece? 10. 10. Okay. 
Now, again, I want to use all the knowledge I have already developed on the board. I'm just fitting it there in order to save me the most like proving it from scratch, making a whole new diagram and all that kind of thing. So tan, by definition, again, use one of the trig identities you already know, is whatever what? Sine over cos. Do you remember? <coughs> like I've just stated what tan is, okay? And you're like, oh no, <laughs> I see where this is going. Sine alpha plus beta is a bit of a mess. Cos alpha plus beta is also a mess. So this next line I'm about to write is going to be a little bit gross, but stay with it. Sine alpha cos beta. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm writing these, the order I'm writing them in, I tend to do them in order of angles, right? So alpha comes alphabetically first before beta. Um, if this is like P and Q, I'd write P and Q here, and then I'd write P, Q here. But you, you can do whichever order you like. These are just the conventional ones. Sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta divided by cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to employ a little bit of a trick that uh, you've learned, you've seen before in doing your trick identities, uh, which is, this is a bit of a mess. I can simplify it a little bit by dividing the top and bottom by the same thing. I just need to choose the right thing, okay? Now, in this case, there's a whole bunch of different things you can choose. In this case, what I'm going to choose is cos alpha cos beta. If I do the top, I'd better do the bottom. So you can see I'm not actually changing this, I'm just rewriting with slightly different clothes. Okay. One term at a time. We'll start with the bottom because it's actually easier. Cos alpha cos beta divided by cos alpha cos beta. One. Good. Sine alpha sine beta divided by cos alpha cos beta. Yeah. Well yeah, the sine alpha and cos alpha will match. <coughs> The sine beta and cos beta will also match, so that gives you tan alpha, tan beta. Do you, do you agree with that? So the bottom looks nice, right? But at the top, what happens? Well, I'm divided by cos alpha, cos beta, right? This sine alpha matches with this to create tan alpha. And then this cos beta and this cos beta, well, they just cancel out. They're just gone, so, so that's it. What about here? What's going to happen here? The, the cos alphas are just going to cancel out, leaving you with sine beta on cos beta. Oh, that's not so bad after all. Okay. Okay, I have one last spot on the board right here in the middle, which I'm going to cheat and use. So we've done the sum and difference for sine. We've done the sum and difference for cos. The last one to add up to the sum for tan is tan alpha. Okay. Huh. Now, uh, this time to save you because you've done a lot of legwork here, I'm just <coughs> going to cut straight to the chase. Here is the identity. I wonder if you can see why this is what it has to be. What's changed from that one to this one? Sorry. It's just the signs again, which is a thing you you probably see, right? Notice this one, uh, <coughs> the plus. The plus and plus turns into a minus and a minus. Here, the plus and a minus turns into a minus and a plus. Here, you've got, you've got both. You've got a plus and a minus here, which becomes a minus and a plus here. Right? What it stems from is this. Remember how we did all of this stuff over here to try and work out with the negatives? Okay. Well, it turns out you can do this just like you could with sine. I'll let you draw the graph and content yourself with it. But uh, that's the important result that sort of lets you unlock that and turn it into this. Okay. 